So by now, most of you know that Cecil was the unit that I was saving for for the Final Fantasy IV collaboration. So to find out that we were going to get him for free was insane. I'm literally so excited about it because I have this extra Vizior now that I can spend on his shards uh, or on other things. And we also found out that this event is going to come this week, so he's coming on Wednesday. Uh, so this video is going to be a should you build Cecil since you're all going to be getting him. Uh, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about the new Chocobo, Vision Card, and Esper combo. Okay, so we're here to talk about should you pull, wait a minute, should you build Cecil and should you pull for Chocobo? And before we do that, I want to mention that this totally caught me by surprise. I had to spring into action to make this video. I was actually working on my Luartha and Titus should you pull video and also a Final Fantasy XIV collab rerun video. So both of those are already partially made and then now I'm, I'm going to be working on Final Fantasy IV stuff for a while. Uh, so it, it was a welcome surprise but uh, definitely caught me off guard. Before we get into the stats and all the fun stuff that we talk about, I have to thank uh, WOTVCalc.com. They are the number one website for War of the Visions in terms of getting all your stats and information. And uh, it's updated so quickly and everything. So please, please go support them. And uh, I, I appreciate it because they, they do amazing work. Okay, so we're going to talk about Cecil first. You're all going to get him for free. He will be in your account. That is pretty neat. Uh, and we have to say right off the bat as well that in the future we are going to get a barracks um, feature that lets you farm shards for units and it even works for uh, a limited unit. So if you get zero shards for Cecil, you can put him into the barracks and he will slowly accumulate shards and eventually be done. So you can just do that. Now, you're not going to have zero shards shards for Cecil because you can get I think up to 160 free shards for him from all the different quests and the challenge missions and all sorts of things like that and there might even be more I don't know so someone correct, can correct me if that's uh, the case in the comments uh, so there's definitely a case for waiting uh, now that we know we have that shard system coming but maybe he's going to be impactful now and huge disclaimer I am a massive Final Fantasy 4 fan my channel is literally named for my love of Final Fantasy 4 uh, so I am a huge homer and I'm definitely super excited about him. So please keep that in mind uh, when I'm doing this review. So he's a UR light unit, three move, one jump, uh, job lunarian, paladin, uh, sub job soldier, sub job monk. He can use swords, armor, helm, accessories. It's all pretty cool. Taking a look at his stats, he's got good HP, okay TP, it doesn't really matter for him. Uh, his AP is, is like lower. It's not bad, but it's kind of low. Uh, attack is decent, magic doesn't matter, critical rate pretty high for base critical rate, and then okay dexterity and high luck. So that's all really good right there. His agility is on the low side and I mean two defense is okay but it's not really anything at all so that's kind of interesting. He does get some more decks from his board, and I want to say that now that we've got a few different sources of information, we've uh, we've got Word Division Calc, and then on there they have the index, and the index has all the stats for all the different units. And uh, I'm gonna tell you right now that my stats that I put here, this is the job level stats, the regular level stats, and then the board stats, but then not stuff like these nodes like 20% uh, decks, not things like master abilities that give you like 30% magic. I don't include those in my calculations for putting up stats here, but I usually do talk about those things in these videos. So that's just something to keep in mind. Whereas on the index, if you go on there, it's going to give you the stats with all of those things I just mentioned included, uh, which is really important to, to think about. When you look at something like 20% increase in dex, that actually factors in the base stats, and which means the job level stats and the, um, the regular level stats, but not the board stats. Uh, so it's actually when it takes 20% of a number to give him more dex, it's not even taking 20% of the 175 here. Uh, we'd actually minus however many much dex he gets from board stats, and that would be the thing that we're taking 20% from. So just something to consider. Okay, so resistances, he's weak to dark, of course, and then this is where 
one of Cecil's major selling points is. He's got 20% slash resist and 15% pierce resist. Uh, those are two, um, well slash is obviously super prevalent and then piercing has become increasingly prevalent uh, because of Glacella, Victoria's coming back, uh, and then now Kane is gonna be coming around. So that's definitely a very interesting resist to have. He has no uh, feelings, you know, either way about pier or about uh, strike damage, but he is weak to magic and uh, projectile. And then he's got the Paralysis and Charm Resistances, and I like those a lot. Uh, those are really good to have. Uh, and then TMR, it's an accessory, and it gives you attack, defense, critical rate, HP. Those are all really good. I like that a lot. Uh, and then the TMR skill is a nice little attack, magic, and bravery boost for a big group of enemies, or enemies, allies. Uh, and that's all well and good, too. And then Master Ability, this is really important. He gets 15 light attack. Not 15 slash attack, not 15% uh, attack, whatever. It's 15 light attack, which means it's going to work for his slashing attacks and it's going to work for, most importantly, his monk sub job. It's so important that they gave him light attack, so I'm really psych uh, psyched to see that on there. Next up, talking about his support abilities, he's going to get something uh, very similar to the uh, the Paladin ability um, that gives you your defense and your HP, that's a really good ability. He gets his strike attack up from Monk, uh, and then the self-sacrifice from Soldier, uh, and then HP up from Monk. So some pretty good things here. I definitely would go with the defense and HP up, as well as the self-sacrifice, um, and then maybe cut the self-sacrifice if you're going Monk. Uh, there's definitely a few ways to go here, and if you're going trying to go really tanky, then you have the HP up, but I I'm going to definitely mix around with the first three. So maybe even the strike attack up and the self-sacrifice to go super monk power and see how that goes. And then for counters, he gets the, the paladin guard, which is the reduced physical damage, but his is the like the Lunarian paladin guard. And it actually, I think it's got an, um, a better uh, potency in terms of damage reduction, so that's very cool. And then counter slash and counter strike. And counter strike is cool because again, it's striking damage and not slashing damage. That is valuable within itself, and it's it's something to consider for a unit that can uh, actually uh, take a few hits. That maybe he can use a few counters. I would still personally go with the damage reduction because that's just the way that I like to play. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got his main job, the Lunarian Paladin, uh, and he's got a bunch of different skills here. So there, the first attack is just a, a very small slash that increases zone agility, which is important. Uh, then he got has another stronger slash that has a chance to inflict disable, which is just totally awesome. Uh, he's got kind of like a sentinel type skill that's also going to uh, increase his resistance to spirit debuffs. Um, very very cool. Uh, and then he has like a consume own HP, uh, give somebody a barrier, and uh, I'm not really sure about this skill at all. Like it's a really strong barrier, and I think it's just going to depend on who you're you're using with him. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wait on that one. I, I, it might be something you turn off. Um, and then he gets an AOE attack that's quite strong. Uh, it decreases the, the target's attack for three turns. Uh, and the AP expenditure, it's not that high. Like, it's high, but for what it does, it's like it's not that high, I think. So that, that all looks really good. Um, okay, and then on the sub job, he gets a another buff, uh, and that's important. Uh, another TP skill that's going to increase HP and HP restored for allies. Uh, it's kind of like your Divine Grace. Uh, and then he gets a Reaper Killer, kind of like AoE straight line slash. Uh, and then another consume HP, give a barrier to um, to your allies for magic damage taken. And I'm really split on these again because you all know that I love Dario. And magic barrier is one of the, the best skills around. And if this is going to be something similar, then... That's kind of insane. Like, I'm definitely going to be messing around with these for sure, and I'll make videos about that. Uh, but they're definitely ones to watch. Uh, the other thing that's so nice about them is they're just massive TP skills, so he can get a lot of AP from that. Uh, so that's definitely good. Okay. Soldier is pretty straightforward. We've got the Osmos Force. We have the... Um, 
hazard form for a buff, uh, and then the paralyzing edge, the hazard spin, ha a hard slash, and hazard crash. Those are all great skills. It's definitely something to mess around with. I, I like those skills a lot, um, but I think I'll probably be using the main job or monk. So Monk is going to give you the uh, store to increase your attack, it's an amazing buff. Uh, and then you're just going to get a bunch of alternate sources or alternate types of damage, which is super important in this game. Uh, so you have your Pummel, you have your Surge Strike and Terra Slash, and then the um, the kind of Asuna ability, which is very good. So uh, I really like this, I think this is something I'm going to be playing a lot with, uh, so definitely expect to see some Monk on this channel. Okay, and then Limit Burst, uh, this is also very cool. It's an expensive skill, but it's got good damage if you upgrade it, and then a 67% uh, chance to stun. Now here's the thing, so you're likely not going to use this that often unless you have something like Bells, and I was talking to the wise prodigy, um, the uh, uh, streamer, and he was mentioning that, you know, if a, if a skill, if a limit break upgrade doesn't increase like the chance of a status effect, it's just the damage that it increases, then it's not as important on your tier of limit breaks to actually upgrade. And that makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of limit breaks I want to upgrade. Uh, and then if I wanted to use this skill, I would just be using it for the stun because he already has skills that do this much damage anyway. Uh, and the stun is a very, very cool ability. So definitely something I'll look into, um, but I don't think that this is like a standout limit break by any means at all. Now we're going to talk about some comparisons for Sassel and I'm going to do more than usual because there's lots of really fun ones. And we're actually going to start with Thancred uh, because I was watching the Cabbage video on the Cabbage channel and he was mentioning this comparison. He talked about resistances so I thought this would be cool if you've, if you've watched his video, if you've heard of his channel maybe, uh, then uh, <laughs> you would uh, think this is cool to see the stats uh, side by side and then the resistances side by side. So you can see that they, they both have that nice Nice 20% slash resist, uh, but then you can see where Thancred's resistances really go crazy with projectile, uh, with strike, and then he still gets a little bit of pierce, um, but then super duper weak to magic. Um, and then otherwise, um, you're gonna see Cecil's like looks like a little bit more of an attacker. He gets self sacrifice. I think Thancred does get some attack boosts as well, uh, but they're actually very comparable with luck, with uh, agility, uh, HP. They're they're definitely in the same realm. Their skill set is is different for sure. Although they both have supporting abilities as well, so definitely a very good comparison. I can see why Cabbage is you know such a popular guy. And then Ramza was another one that I wanted to do because he was also this, you know, main character like you are that we got that was also kind of a bruiser in a way he got because he had good HP, he had a, a magic tanking job, his resistances are decent as well, and you can see his attack is actually very comparable to Cecil, um, as is his HP, uh, his dexterity and his luck, uh, but he gets more agility and he gets that spirit. Uh, but then again, Ramza has this whole you know other side to him of his skill set uh, that's very different from Cecil so they're not super comparable but it is fun just to kind of look at this type of thing. Okay now the next thing I want to talk about is comparing Cecil with Kane and, and the reason that I do this is not that they fill the same role but it is fun to do this for collab units because you're making a choice between them uh, possibly. If you want to pull Kane you definitely don't want to waste too much Vizzy or maxing Cecil. So when you when you take a look at Kane, um, again like there you can see Kane's definitely a bit more of an attacker. Uh, he's got less HP. Uh, he gets more AP, and and they're um, a little more uh, agility as well. But then you think, okay, well Cecil has self-sacrifice. He gets this massive attack boost. Well, Kane actually gets the same attack boost, and instead of, instead of losing eight percent of every single resistance, he actually just loses um, five defense. Uh, so that means that he's not going to hurt as much with the magic attacks, um, whereas with Cecil he loses that magic resistance. So Se or Kane gets an even better better version of self-sacrifice. So. Uh, you can just kind of compare if you want here. And then finally, we've got Engelbert. Uh, and then Engelbert is a pure tank, he has hate generation, and that is important. So uh, you can see that their resistances um, 
like again, Engelbert has full like tank resistances. He has his one weakness, uh, but Zessel has good resistances, and that's kind of one I'm trying to to draw attention to here. So when we take a look at Cecil, the two main takeaways are the resistances and then the strike attack possibilities. Okay, so now now we're going to talk about the Chocobo MR card that's coming out, and I don't know what this is going to look like. Is it going to be a banner um, that has a guaranteed step up? Uh, normally we have that for UR cards, but this is an MR card, so uh, I would be thrilled if there was like a really cheap step up banner, that would be amazing. But this card is super interesting to a lot of people, and we'll take a look at why. So the unit effect is going to be defense up. That is a really cool unit effect. The party effect is agility up, and that is incredible. We only have one card that does that other than this, and that is the, uh, the Final Fantasy Tactics UR Vision card, uh, the Scion card. And this card also gives even amounts into attack and into uh, magic, um, and then some good HP. So this is a really decent MR card, and I like it a lot. So this is the Scion card comparison. You can see that you can get 15% uh, max agility uh, and then, or 15% to your agility and then on the Scion versus 10% on a max uh, Chocobo card. And then the Scion is gonna give you some slash attack as well. So that's also a very good uh, ability and you're gonna get way more stats on the, on the Scion card as well. My biggest regret in this game, like hands down, my number one biggest regret is not working on my Scion card. I was so lucky to be able to pull it and then when FFT came back and we were able to farm shards in the vision, uh, in, the sh in the shop, I didn't do it. And that is, without a doubt, the worst mistake I've made in War of the Visions because it's such a cool card, uh, especially for live PvP. I think it's really important to stack agility sometimes uh, for certain parties. So, so definitely, um, I'm looking forward to trying to get this Chocobo card. This Chocobo card, if you want to build it part way, well, you can go to two stars and you can get six defense and 7% agility and ignore that charm resistance. That's not in the game yet. That's in Japan when they have abilities added to all of their MR and UR vision cards. Uh, so that's it's there from uh, War of the Visions Calc, but it doesn't apply to us. And then if you go to one more star, you can get another two defense and another agility. I really think at this point it's just worth it to go all the way if you're going to go to three stars. If you go to two stars, like that's not bad. Um, definitely for a like a beginner player or someone that, that's casual, that's a very good uh, little boost. But I think that if you're going to go for this card, just max it. It's an MR card. It's going to be easy. Okay, and then you also get an Esper. Yes, an Esper comes with this card. That's pretty sweet. Uh, and it is a attack-oriented Esper. You get a little bit of uh, ice weakness, some earth resistance, um, and then you get a uh, a buff as the um, the ability here, which is very cool for the evocation magic. I like that a lot. I don't know if I've seen that before, so that's that's awesome. The ability board is also very very interesting because you can get missile attack up. You can get a 15% uh, attack up, which is more than the usual, like, you know, 8% or 10%, whatever it is. Uh, and then slash resistance. So slash resistance is always an important thing. Um, and then there's some earth killer, you know, your accuracy, your evasion rate, all that kind of stuff. So uh, this is a really handy little esper. And I think in a, in a pinch, this could be very useful. Uh, definitely for people that use uh, gunners, this could be very important to you uh, to go for that 10% missile attack and then that 15% attack up. Uh, but then the slash resist, that's also just really good. So definitely a good addition. Um, you know, a, a player with a ton of espers might not need this but uh, a lot of players could use this in their inventory. Okay, so that's the that's the video and, and we're asking, should you pull slash should you build? Uh, so we're gonna talk about Cecil first and I'm going to go out on a, and say here, and you're gonna be surprised, I'm gonna say, no, most players should not build him. And I'm gonna say that for multiple reasons. The the first being that we just learned about these EX jobs uh, and those are coming like four months down the road. And, and that means that, you know, 
Cecil might not get updated for a while, so that's something to consider. The other thing that's important to think about is that he's just another light slasher, uh, and that he doesn't have like any piercing or like defense breaks or slash resistance piercing or anything like that. Um, and I just think that he's going to fill a like a, a slashing role in in parties that people already have a bunch of slashing units. So uh, I definitely think that in that way he might be kind of a bit of an overlap with your account. Now if you don't have a light slasher yet then then he might be good for you uh, for sure and and of course if you just like him you should pull him for, pull for him or, or sorry build him because in the end you should be building who you want to build who you like who you think is cool um, but I just think that overall like he's not going to contribute to a lot of players accounts but I do personally think that he does have some bright spots I think that um, he would be a good addition to certain accounts. I just, I don't want to go out on the record and recommend him to everybody because I don't think that he's going to be for everybody. And then for Chocobo, I think it's a maybe. I really do. I think if you play live PvP, if um, stacking agility is important to you, then you're going to pull for this guy. Uh, but a lot of people, that won't be as important for them and there's going to be a lot of good stuff coming up. So then again, you're going to want to save your Vizior. Uh, this is an MR card. You're going to get it eventually. Now, if you are a new player, then I've got some good news for you. These are both good to go. If you're just getting back into the game, or you've never played War of Divisions before, then Cecil is a fantastic UR to start with, um, because he's going to be able to do a lot of things for you. He'll be a damage dealer, he can be a bruiser, he can be uh, a makeshift tank. When I started the game, I used Ramza as a tank for a long time until I got um, some other tank characters and that actually worked really well in a lot of ways um yes you're gonna have to use valve love if you're going that extreme but I, i'm not suggesting you use him as a tank i'm just saying he can fill in uh, in a couple of spots if you're a beginner player and the fact that he's free and they give you all these shards it's just too good to pass up to have more tmrs uh more um max units for the tower uh, that's just a really good deal and the same thing with chocobo you're getting a good card you're getting a good esper this is definitely something that a new account could use so uh, i definitely think new players or possibly returning players should uh, build slash pull for these uh these cards and these units Okay, that is going to be it for this video, and I appreciate your patience throughout it. Uh, let me know if it was useful to you in the comments below, uh, and then let me know what your plan is for Cecil, if you think you should uh, build him, or if you think uh, you should pass on him, and then if that is what you're doing, I want to know why. I want to know, are you going for Kane? Are you going for Rosa? Are you waiting for the FF10 units, etc.? Uh, and we'll get to discussing in the comments.